Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to make a half-drop seamless pattern swatch in Adobe Illustrator. If you've never used seamless pattern swatches before, they're similar in some ways to a regular color fill swatch. Let me show you what I mean. If you select an object on the artboard and come over to the Properties panel and click on the Color Fill icon, you can choose any color that you want and Illustrator is going to fill it with that swatch color. But you can also click on one of the swatches and Illustrator applies the seamless pattern swatch instead. Once it's been applied, if you don't like the size of it in relation to your object, then you can even scale the size of the pattern itself. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video. I'll come to the Layers panel and we're going to hide the heart for now and look at the swatch itself. To be seamless, a pattern must be designed in such a way that when you create a copy of it and move it either to the right or to the top or actually in any direction, you can't see where the design starts and stops. And that's the beauty of a seamless pattern swatch because it can be applied to an object of any size or any shape. I'm going to delete these and move to another document and let's talk about how we determine the size of the design versus the size of the background. First of all, I'll start out with a design and the design that I'm using here I've already created to save us some time. If you'd like to see how I made it, I'll leave a link to another video at the end of this tutorial. The design I created is three inches wide and as a rule of thumb I'll double the width and that's going to be the size of my background. Now, the size of the background is not as important as the fact that it has to be square. If it's not square then the whole pattern is not going to end up being seamless. I also recommend that the size of the square is a whole number rather than a 6.25 or a 6.37 because it's easier to remember the number and you're going to have to be typing it in several times. Times. Now the height of the design is greater than the width of the design. The thing to remember though is the height of the design needs to be about an inch less than the height of your square. The top of my design is actually just a little bit taller than five inches but not by much and this is going to be the perfect size for this half drop seamless pattern swatch. I'll select the design and copy it keyboard shortcut command C and move to a new document and paste it here keyboard shortcut command V. I've already determined the size of my background is going to be a six inch square so I'll get the rectangle tool keyboard shortcut M Click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box and type in six inches for the width, tab down and type in six inches for the height and press the return key. I'd like my background centered on the artboard so I'll come to the properties panel and click horizontal align center and vertical align center. Then I'll click on the color fill icon. I want to change the fill color to a light gray and remove the stroke. We can never leave a stroke on our background or the pattern won't be seamless. Now the placement of our first design is the most important of all the copies we're going to put on the background. From it we determine the placement of all the other designs. To make this a seamless pattern I have to be very precise with my placement so I'm going to use the XY values of the background to make sure that happens. If you've never used XY values before, well, they're kind of like the GPS of your artboard. Every anchor has a specific location. It's measured by how far it is from the left of the artboard and from the top of the artboard. The little box in the properties panel represents whatever object is selected on the artboard. Right now the center reference point is selected and that tells me the center of my background is seven and a half inches from the left side of the artboard and five inches from the top. But we need to place the design over this top left anchor so I'll click the top left reference point and the XY values are four and a half inches from the left side and two inches from the top. Knowing that, I can get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select the design. And I'll select the center reference point here because the center is what needs to be placed on the anchor. And what I do is type in the XY values where I want the object to be centered. So I'll type in four and a half, tab down and type in two, and press enter. Now the design is centered exactly over that top left corner. 
When I click on the artboard though, you'll see the design is behind the background and I need to move it to the front. I'll select it and use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command Right Bracket. With the first design placed, I have part of the design inside of the background and part of it on the outside. To place the second design, I've got to take all of the parts of the design that are hanging outside of the left background and move them to the inside of the right background. And it's easier to do than it sounds like. I'll come up to Object, choose Transform, and click on Move and my design moved, but that's not a concern. I'll put in the right numbers and we're gonna be fine. I do want a horizontal move. I'm gonna put in the value of the width of my background, which is six, and then I'll tab down. I don't need a vertical move, so I'll type in zero here, and then I want a copy so that I keep the original design as well. Now when these sides come together, because of the way we've placed them on the background, they're going to be seamless. But we've got to do the same thing with the top. Any part of the design that is extending off of the top of the background has got to be on the inside of the background at the bottom. So I'll lasso over both of the designs, come up to Object, Transform, Move again. This time we don't want a horizontal movement, so I'll type in zero, but we do want a vertical movement. I'll tab down and type in six and press copy. Now from all directions, our pattern is going to be seamless, but we do have one more design to add in and that's our half drop design. I'll select the top design, come up to object, transform, move once again. This time we're going to use half the width and half the height of the background, and that's three inches. So I'll type in three, tab down three, and press copy. And now all of our designs are placed and ready to become a seamless pattern swatch. I do want to change the background color, so I'll select it, come over to the properties panel, and click on the color fill icon. I'm going to choose this light green CMYK color 358570. Then I'll go to the layers panel and lock the background so I don't select it as I select all of the design pieces. Then I'm going to go up to object and choose expand appearance. And then while everything is still selected, I'll go back up to object and I'll choose path and outline stroke. And I'll click on the artboard to deselect these and unlock the background. I'm going to make a copy of the background. I'll select it and copy it, keyboard shortcut command C, and then I'm going to paste it in place. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut shift command V. And now we'll move to the properties panel and I'll select everything, both the background, the front, and the designs and go to the Properties panel in the Pathfinder area. I'm going to click on this ellipsis for more options, and I'll use the fourth icon from the left, which is the Crop Pathfinder. When I click here, Illustrator crops all of the parts of the design that were outside of my background, takes away that top rectangle which we used, and leaves us with a pattern that is ready to become a seamless pattern swatch. First, I want to select everything and group it, keyboard shortcut, command G, and then I'll go to the swatches panel. I've added the swatches panel to my workspace. You can come up to window and choose swatches and open the swatches panel that way. Now all I have to do is grab hold of my design and drag it over and drop it into the swatches panel. You see the little thumbnail of it here. And I'm going to move over to the Layers panel and hide the swatch because we don't need that anymore. I'll get the Ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and drag an ellipse out on the artboard. And all I have to do is select the swatch. Illustrator applies the design to the object and it's the exact size that we created. Now the design seems a little big for this object, so I'm going to scale it down. I'll move up to Object. Transform. This time I'll choose Scale. Now unfortunately, the entire object scaled rather than just the pattern, and that's because Transform Objects is checked. I need to uncheck that, and the object returns to its original size, but the pattern is scaled right now to 53%. And I can just scroll over this value with my mouse and choose whatever size I want, and when I'm satisfied with it, I'll click OK. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and you can see we now have a very nice half drop seamless pattern swatch. 
once you go to the trouble of creating a seamless pattern swatch, it would be nice to have access to it for other projects. The problem is that once you close this document, unless you save it, you're going to lose all your hard work. There is a way though to preserve the swatch. Let me show you what you do. Come down to the bottom left icon in the swatches panel. This is the swatch libraries menu. Click and hold here and you'll see all sorts of swatches, but we want to come to the very top and choose save swatches. Now you're going to have an opportunity to give this a name and I suggest you type in something that will help you remember exactly what this is. I'm going to type in green half drop heart pattern and press save. Now when I open a new document, I'll be able to access this. I'll come up to File, choose New, then I'm going to open a new document. And we don't see it in the Swatches panel, but I come back to this Swatch Libraries menu, click and hold it, and I have at the bottom User Defined. And here I can choose the green half drop heart pattern, and I have a new Swatches panel that's named the green half drop heart, and right here is the pattern swatch we just created. And that's how you create and save a half drop seamless pattern swatch in Adobe Illustrator. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about creating this kind of a seamless pattern swatch. There are a number of different kinds of seamless pattern swatches and I'll leave links to my tutorials on how to make those in the comments section. Right now I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.